Welcome to Sacred Success Salon, where we are talking to our amazing guest experts about the solutions and the codes to reveal the solutions and technologies we are channeling for the future of humanity. My name is Anna Kowalska. I am your host. And today I'm really excited to have an amazing conversation. I already know it's going to go places that are going to just excite you with our amazing guest today, Dr. Ellen Albertson. Welcome, Ellen, to the show. Thank you, Anna. I am excited. We had a really great little chat before you hit play. So I'm excited to see what comes out of this. And thank you everyone for being here today. Yes, we started and now we want to bring you into it. So let me just say a couple words about who Dr. Ellen is so you know who you're listening. More about Dr. Ellen is below the video. She's a psychologist, registered dietitian, and well-being coach. Also, Reiki master, self-compassion teacher. She's known as a midlife whisperer who helps women to get unstuck, have energy, confidence, clarity to make their next chapter best chapter. And I think it's so appropriate, Ellen, for what you do. Do you prefer Dr. Ellen or Ellen? I want to be respectful. Of Either way is fine. Okay, great. <laughs> I will play with both. So I think it's so appropriate because not only are we, I, I know I'm 49, so I'm heading into the next chapter. What is life about at my age when the, I know menopause, you play in the area of menopause. I'm in that conversation of what's going on to happen with my life and how do I use the energy that no longer goes to reproductive organs going differently now in how do I channel it differently in my life? But also humanity is going into the next chapter. So all of this is coming together at such a beautiful time. And I just love where our conversation is going to inspire the women watching and listening to what's possible for them. Yeah, absolutely. I love that you brought up menopause. Boy, 49, that's a really pivotal point. But you know, what happens is all of this energy that was going into literal reproduction mm -hmm. can be channeled into other things. The brain changes as we go through menopause. And mm -hmm. so we get more selfish, you know, and we also at midlife, we're looking and we're saying, gosh, maybe there aren't as many years ahead of me as behind me, I'm running out of time. And our soul is like, hello, you came to earth. You got incarnated for a reason. Let's get rocking and rolling. I know that was my case. And the cool thing is about going through menopause now is that we're talking about it and we're finding solutions. And we're also, you know, everything from lifestyle, diet, stress, new, you know, exercise, sleep, and certainly hormone replacement therapy, if that's right for you, we're talking about it. So you don't have to feel like crap. It can be a really exciting, vibrant time. And like the Dalai Lama says, the Western woman is here to save the world. So there's a lot of problems and we are here to, uh, to, to rock, have a great time and also to make a difference. Yeah, I just got chills when you said that because it is a quote that we hear a lot and I think, oh, we used to hear. And then it, it, some circles still talk about it. I know when I first got into spirituality a couple of decades ago, well, um, I heard that quote and then... The, and then we start to demonize Western Western society. And I'm like, well, what happened to that Western woman saving the world? And I, I think it's 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 a I still believe that it's true. <laughs> yeah, West well, I think it's about, you know, that we're supposed to bring in the feminine. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have this idea right now of, you know, the patriarchy where we rape and pillage everything for capitalism. Right. It's always yeah. consume, consume, make more, grow, grow, grow. And it's like, no, there's a different way of living in harmony with each other, with the earth that is regenerative where we can, you know, like I'm going to say we're going to sit around the campfire and sing Kumbaya, but you know, there's a different way of being yeah. and the, you know, Gaia, the earth, the feminine has really been um, pushed down for hundreds and thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's this resurgence of another way of doing things where we are collaborating, where we are, we're looking at, you know, how each and every single one of us, the kind of stress we're putting on the planet. I mean, we really need to come together as a species in order to change mm -hmm. things like global warming. I don't know where, how it is where you are, but the, the, you know, climate changes for me is one of the issues that we all need to be sitting around. And so, I mean, things are changing because we really have to change or there won't be human beings anymore. So we have to really mm -hmm. change the way that we're approaching business, life, relationships, the way that we're seeing that we are part of all that is. Yeah. 
So beautiful. So let's let's bring back the conversation to the woman in a certain age, because I know most of the women who are listening to us are in the age where, and it's just because it's a demographic I attract. <laughs> so it's women who are in a conversation of what is next? What do I have to give? My hair is getting silver. We were just talking about my silver streaks and our hair getting silver. And, and the conversation that used to be about women where after a certain time, you have nothing else to contribute. And and rightfully so, to the point of what you, that you brought up, it's changing. We do have so much to contribute, especially as time goes on. So how do we be with everything that's opening up on planet Earth, all the possibilities? Because we're talking about new solutions being channeled, new technologies, new ways of living as human beings, and awakening of the feminine, bringing the feminine. So what is the opportunity for us women, especially in the next chapter of our life with what's happening on planet Earth? Yeah, I think the, the first piece is let go of who you think you're supposed to be and embrace who you are. And that's the first step in you know my book, Rock Your Midlife, and when I'm working with people is really get to know yourself. And I know my own story was like, I was clawing up this ladder of success, doing everything that I thought was supposed to make me happy, you know, the right job, the right, you know, the kids, the husband, the house and the suburbs, the whole nine yards. And I got to the top of the building. And I'm like looking around going, I am not happy. This is not making me happy. So the first step is really letting go of who you think you're supposed to be. And I think that's a really great opportunity of menopause as we're going through this change. We get to start to think like things aren't quite working because when things start to shift hormonally, you're not quite feeling like yourself partially because you're not yourself. I think, again, the soul is starting to wake up and say, I came here for a reason. So the first piece is really get to know yourself, mm -hmm. know who you are, because what happens is as you get to know yourself, you become more authentic. You start to feel more confident. The word confidence, the root of it is confide, which means to trust. And so mm -hmm. I know a lot of women, you know, in their forties, fifties, even they feel a little bit of imposter syndrome. Like I don't belong here. I don't quite feel right. I feel like I'm wearing this mask. When you are yourself, nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong, right? If you just show up and you're yourself, wow. you mm -hmm. could say you're doing it wrong. So it's mm -hmm. start drilling down, thinking about what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What do I love to do? What do people say? You know, what am I channeling? Like for me, go check me out on Instagram on the midlife whisperer. And um, I love to dance when I was five. That was the thing. Think about what did you want to do when you were five? And mm -hmm. I loved dance. I studied dance with Martha Graham's troupe and mm -hmm. just really loved to dance. It wasn't in the cards. You know, I grew up in a family where you were supposed to like, go to college, get a real job. And that was either doctor, lawyer, or do something in business. Yeah, right? The like, real job. <laughs> yeah, get a real job, right? <laughs> and so I followed that track for a long time. And then, you know, I've, I've reconnected with dance. And to me, dance is really a metaphor when I'm feeling authentic and I'm feeling myself, I feel like dancing. But think about when you're five years old, connect with that inner five-year-old. Like, because when you're five, like mm -hmm. anything is possible. You can be, you can friggin' fly, right? Yeah. Like you're flying when you're five, you're talking to your imaginary friends who, by the way, are your spirit guides. But then everyone's like, no, you can't talk to imaginary friends. No, you can't fly. Mm -hmm. You can't be an astronaut, right? You have to take this prescribed path. You can't be a dancer. So get to know yourself. Working with a coach is a great way to do that. I've got a lot of journaling prompts in my book, Rock Your Midlife. Just to, the first step is really getting to know yourself, getting to know that inner five-year-old. Let her out. Mm -hmm. Do that thing. If you wanted to be a firewoman, I don't know, go like join a, you know, do volunteer firework. I live on a little mm -hmm. island and a lot of us, people are going back and joining the EMTs and the fire department and all those things. But play, have fun, lighten up. Life is short. I know I was voted most serious in high school and I've really worked hard to be more myself, right? Mm -hmm. We we develop these layers. And yeah. I think so much of the work is to get to know yourself and rip the layers off, rip mm -hmm. off those, those lamp shades mm -hmm. so you can let your light shine. So that's number one. You've yeah. got to know yourself. Mm -hmm. Number two, you've got to love yourself. I know we hear that a lot. And people are like, oh, how do you love yourself? What does that entail? To me, the how of loving yourself is really self-compassion. And I was mm -hmm. super fortunate enough to have Kristen Neff, who is the pioneer in this area of self-compassion, be on my dissertation committee when I was getting my PhD, looking at self-compassion and body image. And so I studied self-compassion and essentially it's treating yourself the way you would a good friend. And mm -hmm. so 
as you treat yourself in more a kind way, you're judge, you're kinder, you're less judgmental and kinder to yourself. You know, when you fail, when you make mistakes, it's common humanity. Everybody fails. Everybody makes mistakes. Things go wrong. I got breast cancer two years ago. I was like, what? Things go wrong. We get sick. Yeah. People die. People go through menopause, divorce, empty nets. There's a lot happening at midlife, right? We've got kids yeah. and aging parents. So the self-compassion piece, you know, the, the being kind to yourself, the common humanity, knowing things go wrong and the mindfulness of noticing when you're suffering and instead of plowing forward thinking, gosh, if I had a friend who was going through menopause, if I have a friend going through divorce, empty nest, job issues, or even this question of like, who am I? What am I doing here? What would I say to her? I wouldn't be like, you know, just suck it up have a cup of coffee and go back to work. I'd be like, oh my God, let me make you dinner. Let's go for a walk. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Let me give you a hug. So you stop when you start to notice, oh, I'm just not feeling like me. I don't feel so good. I don't know what I'm doing or I'm going through something. And you're just like, okay, what do I need right now? And maybe mm -hmm. that's just a cup of tea. Maybe it's a nap. Maybe it's, you know, doing a meditation. Maybe it's going for a walk. So self-compassion is so powerful. What it does is it reduces stress, anxiety, and depression. Again, all mm. big midlife challenges, women at midlife have the highest rate of depression for any group for our age and gender. Oh, wow. reduces all of those difficult negative states super helpful as you're going through menopause middle of the night i'm having a night sweat and i can't sleep i can i can be here for me and say wow yeah. this is really hard right now but then it's also increasing optimism it's increasing well-being it's increasing resilience it's like a parachute and a life vest so mm -hmm. it's a life vest when you're going through the difficulties of midlife the big existential questions what am i doing here i'm yeah. going through divorce that you've got this life vest. Okay, I can stay afloat because I can just be like, okay, I'm just here for me. I'm not going to change it, make it go away, mm -hmm. but I can treat myself like a good friend. But it's also a power shoot getting back to your like, okay, how do we expand? Well, yeah, I can jump out of that plane and start that business, write that book, you know, go on that trip. Because if I fail, well, I can pick myself back up mm -hmm. and I can start to look at reframe failure if you are going to succeed in this path of this soulful business owner connection, you're going to make mistakes. I have failed over and over again, but all of the rocks of my failure are now like I can help somebody else because I've yeah. been through this. I've been through divorce. I've been through breast cancer. I've been through blindness. I've been through empty nest. I've got the aging parents. I've been mm -hmm. through lots of failures in my business. And so I'm here. Mm -hmm. I've been through menopause to help my sisters and be like, okay, I got gotcha. you. I've been yeah. through this. And that lightens our load. And we can help other people. And mm -hmm. so what happens as you start to love yourself too, is you stop doing those things that insult your soul, that sabotage mm -hmm. you. Because mm -hmm. what happens is we've got this, um, the ceiling of how far we can expand. Like that five-year-old's like totally expansive. We sabotage ourselves because we're afraid of our light. And so with self-compassion, with self-love, you stop doing the things that insult your soul and you attract more of what is truly in your highest interest. Mm -hmm. So it really helps to ignite this law of attraction. So we've got the know yourself, love yourself, mm -hmm. and then we get to energize yourself. You know, as you know, Anna, we are energetic beings. Yeah. We are solid matter, but all yeah. of that matter is just all mm -hmm. of these atoms spinning so fast. And so you're not your age, you're your energy. Mm -hmm. and we can work on it. our energy, mm -hmm. right? So we work on our energy. I'm sure that you have dozens of ways, whether that's chakra clearing, whether that's grounding, whether that's a healthy diet. We know it's not crazy. I've been a dietitian for 31 years, whole food, plant-based diet, eat more plants, eat less processed food, mm -hmm. make sure to get enough protein, you know, eat enough during the day. I work with so many women who are like, chasing skinny, like stop chasing skinny. What a waste yeah. of time and energy. Give yourself the food you the need so yeah. you can raise your vibe, do the work you need, move your body, work on your stress, get your sleep, and then do those spiritual practices mm -hmm. that really help you to expand your light. Whether that, again, Reiki, meditation, yoga, dance, whatever that is, channeling, work on raising your vibration so that you can really be an energetic force to make a difference. So that's number mm. three. Number four is changing your mindset. You know, we know that we may have something called a negativity bias. So we naturally are looking for what is going to, um, you know, be dangerous, right? We've mm -hmm. got this amygdala, we've got this lizard brain in the back of our skull that's going like, don't do that. You could fail. Mm -hmm. You could waste your money. Like, don't go on that app and meet an amazing partner. You know, you could get burned. You've been burned before. Yeah. Or don't write that book. 
you're going to waste your time. It's going to be a failure. You don't know how to do this. That's, you know, our brain wants to keep us small because being small means you're safe. Mm -hmm. And so what we need to do is be like, okay, thank you very much. But you sit in the back, voice of fear, right? I am here yeah. to make a difference. We've got to work with fear. And there's a lot of ways mm -hmm. you can do that. Name it, you tame it. So hello, fear. I see you. I hear you. Name it, you tame it. Um, feel it, you heal it. Feeling fear in your body. Fear is a physiological, like all emotions, sensation. Mm -hmm. So we might just sweat, might start to sweat, eyes dilate. Um, you know, maybe we have a belly, you know, stomach, yeah. butterflies. Mm -hmm. See if you can transform that into excitement. Think about mm -hmm. how you feel if you go like on a roller coaster or even going on a date, like, oh, I'm excited or I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. Terror and excitement are very the same physiologically. We can reinterpret that signal. So work on that fear brain, work at all of those things, the positive affirmations, the positive mindset. It's not to toxic positivity. If something is difficult in your life, give yourself a self-compassion piece. Yeah. But those loops that go on in your brain all the time, when you notice a thought that's not productive, just be like, okay. I'm going to write these things down. Some things that I, I do sometimes is if I'm, if I'm doing something new and I'm feeling really out of sorts and fearful, feeling anxious, anxiety can be your friend noticing I'm anxious. I write down all the things that I'm worried about. I write everything mm -hmm. on a piece of paper. I wait five minutes. I read them out loud. I wait five minutes and then I burn them and I give them to the wind. Or I throw them into the, into the ocean or the lake, depending on where I am mm -hmm. at that time of year. And it's really powerful. Like Give your, your anxieties there. Like sometimes I'll get anxious if I'm giving a talk. It's because I yeah. need to rehearse. Mm -hmm. I need to, you know, work on my my um, confidence, whatever it is. So work productively with your mind. The mind mm -hmm. is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. Mm -hmm. And as I work more with, you know, channeling, I'm starting to know this voice of channeling, which is like, oh, it's a different vibration than my monkey mind that's going mm -hmm. all the time. So work with your mind, reprogram your mind. There's something called neuroplasticity. And I love the way that spirituality and science are coming together. I mean, yes. it's so cool. like mm -hmm. we have devices that can like, look at your brain waves. I got this thing called Muse, which is this yeah. headband I wear, where mm -hmm. it reads my brain waves. Like it's mm -hmm. so cool that technology is giving us access to more understanding of spirituality. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Number five, so great. Mm -hmm. You've got to rehab your relationships because what happens mm -hmm. is as you go through this transformation, right? So you are loving yourself. You're knowing yourself. You're feeling energetic. You're feeling awesome. I'm here to say too, that I am 61, got the muscle. Amazing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm here to say like this whole BS story about like aging. Yeah. I feel effing great. I do. And I'm I love say I love what you said. You are not your age. You are your energy. That's going to be the title for your talk for, for okay. this, for this, <laughs> for this conversation. Cause I think it just says everything about where you're going. So keep going. I just think it's so yeah, amazing. Thank mm -hmm. you. So, um, oh, I, I didn't say empowerment. I'm sorry. Five is empowerment, which is just oh. like five mm -hmm. is when four is reprogram your brain. And then you get to empowerment. Empowerment is when you're ready to jump out of the plane. Yeah. So I, I know myself, I know that thing that I'm here to do. Like for mm -hmm. me, it's really helping baby boomers and Gen X women age like age, like joyful badasses. Mm -hmm. Cause I think that's what we want. And yeah. you, and each of them doing that thing that they're meant to do mm -hmm. and make a difference in the world. And so with empowerment, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm jumping out of that plane. I got my self-compassion, you know, life vest and parachute on. Mm -hmm. I know myself, I'm feeling energized. I'm feeling great. So empowerment comes from within you're not doing it to check off some box that society says, or there's all of these, you know, BS stories about like, this is what it is to be happy and successful. You mm -hmm. got to figure out what happy and successful means for you by listening yeah. to your soul, by doing your work, but then you're ready to take a step out of that plane. And it might just be a little thing. Maybe you want to like, you know, join a gym, start that yoga class, or maybe you want to go for that yoga teacher training, or you want to travel, or you want to start working on a book, a business, whatever that is you feel empowered to take that first step, whatever mm -hmm. that is. And I think that, you know, I, I like to start, you know, write everything down. Think about the end point. Like, this is where I want to be in a year, five years, mm -hmm. six months. Okay, let's reverse engineer that, write down the steps. And then what am I doing today? Mm -hmm. How am I, you know, going to raise the vibration of the planet and make a difference today? Today, yeah. It, it, today. And that's, you know, because that's all we really have is this moment, right? Mm -hmm. Of showing up as our best self today and making sure yeah. that we're energetically supported. So five is empowerment. Then we get to six, which I alluded to, and that's rehab your relationships. Because yeah. what happens is we're literally going from caterpillar to butterfly. 
And if you look at what's going on physiologically with the, with that metamorphosis is mm -hmm. that the caterpillar is is creating a shroud, a cocoon around itself. You can think of a cocoon where it's safe or a shroud where it's going to die. And it's literally going to digest itself. And then the cells in the caterpillar actually fight it because it actually, you know, excretes this um, acidic goo and it digests itself and it has this imagerial cell. So the mm -hmm. DNA of the caterpillar and the butterfly are identical, but there's clearly something that's going on. And so we go through this transformation, which is challenging. Um, I don't know. I don't think, I mean, we probably agree with this. I don't think there's a woman alive who goes through sort of that fifties meta um, menopause stage without some something. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, every woman that I speak to that has gone through, there is always something that they have worked through. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what happens is you are the butterfly, right? You're starting mm -hmm. to like fly and you're eating nectar instead of leaves and crawling on the ground. But the people in your life still see you as the caterpillar. They're yep. like, you're like, look, I'm the butterfly. I'm dancing. I'm singing. I'm joyful again. And they're like, no, no, you're, you're a caterpillar because we see things as we are, not as they are. And mm -hmm. their self-concept, that's really, we're all living in different realities and we have yeah. these overlaps, but they're, they're seeing you as that caterpillar. And mm -hmm. so what is a couple of dangers, they can draw you back. And you might lose some relationships. For me, you know, I was I left a 25 year marriage. Mm. I couldn't stay in that marriage anymore because my ex husband wanted to sit in a rocking chair and watch the History Channel and drink scotch. Nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. Not yeah. everybody wants to like branch out. Some people just want to have a little relaxing yeah. retirement. But I want to rock midlife, you know. Yeah. And so you I know, needed to leave. Can we just for a second, because it's coming in, like it, it might support somebody who is listening. It's so important because I think everything you're sharing is so is, is powerful and so important. But so often to what you just said, I think women are so connected to this, but I've been married for 25 years and it's like a badge of honor. I can't just leave. And it's something wrong if I leave. It's a bad thing if I leave. And it's not a relationship show. And <laughs> I think a lot of women don't give themselves a chance to live a different life because they're so afraid or don't want to hurt the relationship. So I really grant you bringing it up. Yeah. And I would say I was terrified. I was like, I was scared that I would be able to be on my own because I'd mm -hmm. been with, with in a relationship and there were some good parts to it. My ex-husband and I worked together. We were the cooking couple. We were celebrity chefs in the nineties. We had two beautiful children. And, you know, for, again, from that, from that perspective of everything looks great on the outside, yeah. even that building perspective where it's an apple, it looks great on the outside, but inside it's rotted. Mm -hmm. um, I was very, very unhappy. And mm -hmm. so um, I, I wanted to leave for years and I was really scared. So if you're listening, I would say, you know, question, you know, can the relationship get better? You know, mm -hmm. is this something you want to stay in? And if it's not, it's okay. I think we outgrow relationships. I think we come yeah. in with soul contracts, right? And we do yeah. what we're there and we're meant to do. And I did grow and good things happen in that relationship, but I was ready for a different path. I wanted to rock mm -hmm. midlife. And I'm here to say, there's some great friggin' men out there. Like I am married to a uh, hottie. He is, he's like a Viking warrior. You know, he's, um, he's smart. He's sexy. He's successful, which is huge. Mm -hmm. um, he grows this incredible gardener garden for us. We grow all of our food. He's super cool. He's super fun. He's a double Aquarius and he supports me. That's the mm -hmm. thing. My ex didn't like my success unless mm -hmm. he was a part of it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, Kenny's a part of my success. He's definitely engaged. He's like my camera guy and he's part of my story and what I'm doing in my life. But he's like, you go, girl, you go, go, you go, girl. Mm -hmm. You know, let That's... me help you up the mountain, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're like, how are you? It's again, going back to energy. How are you feeling in the relationship? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was gaining weight. I mean, for us, it was so much, that relationship was so much about food. We were the cooking couple. We were eating. I was drinking too much. Um, I wasn't sleeping. I mean, I was going through menopause at the time too, but I was, I was deeply unhappy and mm -hmm. he wasn't going to change and the relationship wasn't going to get better. So really yeah. asking yourself like, yeah, it's scary, but you know what? You can do it yeah. and get some support. And, you know, mm -hmm. I always ask women like, um, can you make it better? First, is it abusive? Is it meant? And even if it, if is it mentally yeah. abusive? That's a question to ask yourself. Like when I'm with that person, do they put me down? Do they criticize me? Because I think there's a lot of uh, spiritual women who are empaths married to the narcissists and that can be a factor, right? Yeah. So how do I feel in this relationship? And that could be mm -hmm. sort of sexy and great at sometimes, but it, you're not a failure. It's just yeah. that 
you know, and I looked at it when I went for my next long-term relationship, because I plan to make it to a hundred. I really was looking for somebody in something very, very different. Yeah. I wasn't leaning into that initial sexual magnetic attraction. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, what are my core values? What am I really looking for here? Mm -hmm. Who's somebody that where I feel like with Kenny, everything just feels so good. It's mm. just so fun and so light. We feel like little kids and my life is just incredible. You know, if, if you had told Amazing. me, and I remember too, I was, I remember watching um, Eat, Pray, Love with mm -hmm. Julia Roberts, right? In that last scene where Javier, you know, the one where he yeah. comes on, he plays the music and he's like, Liz, it is time. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, where did that go? There was no mm. more of that connection it was gone. It was like the wire was cut and we were just sleep. Well, I was sleepwalking my way through my existence. I woke mm -hmm. up every morning exhausted and I'm happy. Um, and I was like, where's my Javier, you know? So, so I left, but you, so know, you, you found know, your Javier. Mm -hmm. But yeah. another thing you can try too is try, try a trial separation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if, if you feel like, okay, I'm just going to get an Airbnb for a month. Yeah. See what it's like to be on my own and see how I feel mm -hmm. and yeah. see how that goes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, thank you for, thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I just got a sense when you were sharing that um, it's something for us to, since it was your experience, something for us to share from a positive perspective where there is something else possible. And if this is the thing that's stopping you, then you can make a different choice and it will set you up for a different next chapter. Yeah. And I would say too, mm -hmm. if you have kids, because I left and broke up the family, things are really rocky for years. But now mm -hmm. that my kids are 23 and 27, my relationship with them is so great. They, you know, they, they reach out to me all the time. I just took my, my oldest lives in Europe and I just took my son for his graduation to visit. And we just had such a great time and we have such a great adult relationship. So your kids will come around and they know they'll understand. So yeah. that's the thing. It's not, it's not a failure. It's just a transformation. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing. And then, for, sure. And the mm -hmm. last step is yes. yourself, which is what I think we're all about, right? After mm -hmm. you know yourself, you love yourself, you energize yourself, you um, rehab your you rehab your brain. You know, you rewire your brain. You empower yourself. You um, rehab your relationships. And you get to enlighten yourself, and then you're like, mm -hmm. okay what am I doing here? Like, what am I here to do to change? And part of the reason that you're here is to have a good time to enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. Life is freaking amazing. Like just the fact that we're having this conversation that we exist in these bodies, 37 trillion cells and even yeah. more cells that aren't ours. Like all of this, we haven't even gotten to the microbiome and all of those kind of crazy mm -hmm. things that we are conscious and we can make a difference and we connect with spirit. Just to enlighten yourself, which is really finding your passion and purpose. And I'm here to say, and I'm sure Anna, you feel the same way is you are here to make a difference. Yeah. And you're watching this. If you need the, your wake up call, this is your wake up call. <laughs> you don't need to figure it out all at once. I haven't figured it out all at once. I just go about it day by day. And I just wake up in the morning. And I think, how can I serve? Mm -hmm. How can I be myself? How can I love myself? How can I enjoy myself? And, and I go through my day and then, you know, have those moment to moment connections with your soul, your spirit yeah. of telling, okay, what's next for me? And what's the most important thing today, but you don't need to figure it out. And you are here for a reason and you can make a difference and you also can get help. I'm sure Anna has great services. I have great services. You yep. can reach out to me at the midlife whisper, you can grab my book. We're here to serve you because we know that every single person we're here to basically all of us are here to raise the vibration of humanity because mm -hmm. we didn't touch on this too, but I think to me, the biggest, the biggest, um, the scariest thing is that we really are living in the matrix. Yes. Big pharma, big food, yeah. media. We live in an environment that is diabolically designed to get us in this thing called the bliss point. You can mm -hmm. sit in front of your television with, and have a threesome with Ben and Jerry's and a glass of wine. Nothing wrong with going and watching. I like Netflix. I'm a big Bridgerton fan. Right? You are? Okay. okay. That's another conversation. Bridgerton's and I, I have to keep myself from watching Black Mirror. But- you know, but it's the same thing as potato chips. Do I like to have a potato chip in a piece of chocolate? Absolutely. But if I watch television night after night after night, it feels like, ugh. but mm -hmm. it's very, very easy to bliss out. Yes. And, you know, and when you're feeling stuck, when you're in a lot of pain, mm -hmm. when women first come to me, it's like, oh my God, I'm going through menopause. My waistline is expanding. I'm gaining weight. Nothing is mm -hmm. working. My relationships aren't working. I don't like my job. 
And it's like, at the end of the day, I just want to reward myself with, with, you know, substance. I want my dopamine levels to get higher. So I pour a glass of wine. I get out the cheese and crackers. I turn on Netflix and all of a sudden it's midnight and I haven't moved my life forward. And on top of it, I've, I've engaged in behaviors that aren't serving me. So it's not your fault, but we have to take action to not always go to the bliss point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so powerful. What a, I mean, that's the, that's, that's, that's the wrap up. (laughs) You're absolutely right and correct. And about the fact that it's up to us, it's nothing outside of us. The system is designed to keep us in that space and it's up to us. Yep. And it's up to us every morning to wake up and make a different choice moment to moment. Those seven steps are so powerful and still my favorite thing, you're not your age, you're at your energy and work on your energy. So amazing, Dr. Ellen, <laughs> you dropped Thank so you. many golden nuggets. Well, thanks. Well, it's really true. And I think my big mission in life is to show women, we've got this idea when you Google midlife, mm-hmm. what comes up is the wrong side of 40 yeah. um, and it's conjoined with crisis. Mm -hmm. And I still, I'm amazed when I Google midlife, it's like, it comes with crisis. And as, as Brene Brown said, it's not a crisis. A crisis is like, I got breast cancer in 2022. That's a crisis. That's crisis. Yeah. Going Mm -hmm. through divorce. That's a crisis. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a short lived thing, Mm -hmm. but midlife is an unraveling. Mm -hmm. So it's like you make this cocoon and then you've got to unravel to get out of it and figure out who you are. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to say is that if you do the work, if you look at menopause, midlife, all of that is an opportunity because it Mm -hmm. does can stop you right in your tracks. You know, whether that's, you know, parents die or empty nest or divorce or just the physiological changes, estrogen receptors are everywhere. They're in your brain. They're, you know, they're in your heart, they're in your muscle, you start to feel really different. You're like, Oh my God, I just don't feel like myself. Mm -hmm. Um, It it forces you to stop and reevaluate and see like, who am I? What am I doing? How am I taking care of myself? We didn't touch on self-care, but self-care is so empowering and Mm -hmm. it builds confidence when you take time out, even if that's just like 15 minutes a day or a half an hour, listen to a podcast, listen to, you know, your summit Mm-hmm. Or go on a walk, do those things. But um, I mean, guess I'm just here to say that the other side, when you get through the menopause roller coaster, it's freaking fabulous. But you've got to take care of your body. You've got to take care of yourself mm-hmm. because I see too many women, you know, they put on a ton of weight and it's really daunting. You can do it. Yeah. But it's really daunting because your body does start to change. And if you haven't been taking care of yourself, it's a wake up call that it's really time to start. Yeah. Yeah. And with all of that, that those women feel like that's it this is the end this is this is only heading one direction and it's not looking very good and what what i'm hearing you say is no actually (laughs) this is the beginning of a whole new choice you get to make and a whole new life waiting ahead of you so powerful (laughs) it's so fun too Mm -hmm. like i'm having so much effing fun that i kind of like it's like the oprah i maybe i don't know i have to what is that the quote um I don't know. I have, life's so bright that I have to wear shades or something. But oh my gosh, I've heard that. I, I can't yeah, tell you who yeah, says it, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's it. It might it might be Oprah, but it is. It and I be. think that's a piece that I didn't to touch on. When you do all of those seven steps, mm-hmm. what starts to happen is you're just on your path mm-hmm. and you're mindfully present and you're having so much fun in the moment that it's like another moment and another moment and another moment. And you're meeting cool people and you're feeling really good mm-hmm. and you're not even like worrying about like who have, what what's next because you get on your path so instead of bringing it you know full on you're not like climbing up this ladder of success but you're like at the top of the summit and you're looking around and you're like oh okay well there's another summit for me to climb yeah. there'll be a different view up there and I'm keeping going and look I'm making a difference mm-hmm. because it is you know as we start to give up whether that's um you know a lot of women I know start to give up alcohol or the food I'm not saying you have to go that direction But then we need to replace it with these feel goods of helping other people, right? It like feels so Mm. good. I'm sure when you get emails from people like, oh my God, that summit was so great. I learned so much. I want to work with you. And your clients are like, wow, I'm sleeping and my body is changing and my relationships are so good. And I love the work I'm doing. It's like when you help other people, you and you, you know, and you love yourself, you get the more oxytocin and you get motivated and and it's, it's a gas. Yeah. 
Oh, so amazing. That's what's waiting. That's what's possible. <laughs> That's the key to the next chapter. So Dr. Ellen, I know you have a free gift for our audience, a way to get into your world and connect with you. And for those of you who are watching, there is a button below this video to go claim the gift. Could you tell us what you have for us? 10 tips to rock your midlife. So I Woo! touched on 10 things that you can do, the self-compassion piece, the being happy piece, the, you know, finding out who you are, and that will actually give you, um, it's actually a nice little booklet to get you started. And it'll give you a link to my book and connecting with me and getting on my mailing list and all of that good stuff. So I would love, love, love to meet you and help you rock your midlife. Cause I think the more of us that stand up and are like, I want to be a joyful badass. That's who I want to be. I don't want to be like, the old lady in the rocking chair it was so interesting. There's this picture that's going around of the women from the golden, the golden girls, whatever that was called uh -huh. versus the um, sex in the city. Right. So we're doing it. Yeah. The comparing the both the same age right. and, and how they're doing the same age. And I, wow. It's such a stark difference right there. <laughs> I just got a visual. We are doing it. Thank you for being a part, playing a big part in the world, helping women do to, to have a different chapter, to be a badass, joyful badass in their next chapter. Our humanity needs the Western woman who is bold and brave and joyful. And I know that's what you stand for. So thank you, Dr. Ellen. <laughs> My pleasure. So amazing. So make sure you claim the gift, get the booklet, get the 10 steps, connect with Dr. Ellen in her world so you can soak up all the goodness that she brings in. And we'll see you at the next conversation here in the salon. Bye for now.